What it do, everybody? Welcome to episode number 14, baby, of the Hookshot Pod. Cast it's your host, Lucas Cohen. No, 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 let's do it again. Let's do it again. <laughs> You're going to introduce. Go, go, introduce. Go. All right. All right. Welcome, everybody, to the Hookshot Pod. <laughs> <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up. No, I'm good. Um, yeah, what's going on, everybody? UFC 292. That's what we're going to talk about today. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, got a lot to talk about, man. And uh, before we get into it, we're recording this on the Thursday before UFC Vegas 78. So we can't really do a recap. We're getting yeah. this done a little early. We don't know what happens, but really quick predictions for that fight. Dos Anjos versus Luque. We just talked about it. Yeah, it's going to be a decision. I think uh, Dos Anjos probably will, will get the decision just based off of his uh, grappling advantage. You know how he likes to get his opponents against the cage, just make it very, very slow and dirty. I think he'll do that for enough rounds, enough of the time to get the victory. So. I'm going to go Luque and by finish in either round three or round four, man. And I know he's coming off that yeah, brain hemorrhage. That's crazy, man. I didn't even know that. It's, it's bad. But... um. I, I I don't know. I, I think he wouldn't be back if he wasn't ready. True. That's Although he's tough as nails, I still do believe that. I think Dos Anjos is getting up there in age, and I think give me Presidente Luque uh, by finishing round I, three or four. Probably I knock can't, out. I can't get that that picture of when he was striking with Jeff Neal. Like he didn't even look. And this is Jeff Neal. This is not fucking Stephen Thompson, who he also lost to. Yeah. But dude, he didn't look like he sh- was was supposed to be in the cage with him that night, yeah. which was crazy because Luque is a decent striker. You know, I mean. Tyron Woodley rocked him though in in his later one of Still, I mean fight. that's Woodley. If yeah. he throws a bomb at your head with nah, four ounce gloves, you're Luke, gonna get hurt. I don't know. Luke Luke is just uh, he's you know somebody that the UFC I thought would be better than he is or have a better career arc that he than he than he has. So. Well, by the time this is out, you guys will know who won that fight. So yeah. us talking about it right now will mean absolutely nothing True. unless one of us <laughs> nails the prediction. Yeah. But we're really here to talk UFC 292 and UFC 292 only as the basketball world is just. Nothing going on yeah, right now. Literally nothing going on in basketball. We got the FIBA World Cup. Not many people are interested in that Nobody because cares. no stars from other countries. Like usually cares. Jokic and Giannis are involved. Luca is playing and he's shitting on everybody, dude. It's crazy. Luca's I haven't so really good. seen. He had like 34, 13, 12, triple double the other day. He's just wow. but uh yeah, nobody really cares about that. USA should win. They have the best roster on paper, but we will see because you never know. Should be interesting. Um, yeah. yeah, let's talk UFC, man. I'm ready to talk some. Wait, fights. wait. Before we talk UFC, yeah. uh, I just want to ask you about this. Mm-hmm. I, I I'm seeing that there's like two different rosters for Team USA. How does that yeah, work? Yeah, well, it's like think, a select team and yeah, a regular yeah, team. Yeah. I think the select team only like practices and and helps the the actual team you know prepare for this because they have a whole training camp process. So I think that's when they brought in the select team and they actually I heard beat the actual team a few times. Like Kate Cunningham was putting them to work. So. Um, you know, uh, yeah, the, the actual roster is set though. So once they actually begin the exhibition games or the group stage matches, those will be the, the 11 or 12, however many guys are. That's gotta be an ego killer for that. Yeah, no. And, and yeah, cause, uh, Steve Kerr is the, is the head coach of that team and him picking the the starters, that process of picking the starters is kind of interesting because you know brunson and halliburton i'm talking about the select team though oh like imagine being kate cunningham killing all these guys they offered him a spot they said to kate cunningham yo just join he said no he said no yeah he he turned it down interesting so yeah i mean if that in the rare case that somebody from the select team does show out i think that they will get that opportunity but kate didn't want it but yeah um just as i was saying like that process of like you were saying with the ego it's just like imagine being halliburton and arguably having a better individual season than brunson last year and feeling that you should be starting and then you're coming off the bench. And then Anthony Edwards is there. Brandon Ingram, I think, is coming off the bench. So, yeah, that, that's a good well, squad. You know, you know who's on the select team? Who? Langston Galloway. I did see that. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Legend. Langston Galloway. Love, love me know, some Langston. You know, bro. If you know, exactly. If, if you, you know, know, you do know. But, yeah, that's enough for uh, FIBA talk, yeah, USA yeah. Forget talk. Forget all that. Forget all that. Let's talk about UFC 292. This is a big card for us. If you guys don't know, Rohan and I are Aljo ride or die. Oh, yeah, and you know what I was listening to the other day? Yeah. Aljo's song. He has yeah, a song. I did. <laughs> Aljo the rapper. <laughs> it's called Go oh, Dumb. And you know, it's not terrible. It's not terrible. Don't, don't lie. It's not terrible. I, I mean, it's, it's kind the of bar catchy. Is low, though. Like the bar for UFC rappers, like we got Tyron Woodley who tried it out. Um, who else? I can't really think. But yeah. T- oh, t- oh t- did you see that embedded clip with Stephen Thompson trying to rap recently? I did not. And that fight got canceled, but nah, oh that was t- that was hard to watch. I want to play into the mic some go down by <laughs> Aljo real quick. Yo, Hold on, but let's just turn up for the one time. Hey, if Aljo ever decides to go in there, another clip. <laughs> just jam for a sec. This is your reigning bantamweight world champion, the greatest bantamweight all time. This is him. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> that 
fighting for it. <laughs> Turn that shit off. Yeah. All that matters is his fight this weekend against Sugar Sean O'Malley. Okay, so you know what, Aljo? Not that bad. But let's talk about this fight. You know, we were just talking about, you'll see in our short that we released. Is this Sean O'Malley's moment? And I feel like when you go back to a guy like Conor McGregor, who's facing Jose Aldo, it's easier to have your moment against a striker. Yeah. But he's facing Aljamain Sterling, who's a pressure grappler, who's the best back taker maybe of all time in UFC history. This guy has a squeeze like no other. Man, it just feels like it's a stylistic nightmare for Sean O'Malley. I mean, he was getting tripped, tossed all over the octagon by Peter Yan, even though he won the fight due to damage, obviously. But man, I'm just, I've got that bad feeling, man. Being an Aljo fan, I've got that bad feeling that he's going to find that knockout blow. What do you think? Do you agree with that? Or do you think Aljo just tur- shuts down that moment and finds a submission victory? Man, I, I'm all the way team Aljo, bro. And I love Sean. Like, I wouldn't be mad. Again, I would not be mad whatsoever if Sean won this fight. And he has all the tools to do so as well. On the feet, this guy is one of the best strikers in that division, but in the sport. Like, he, is so creative. His freaking pop on his straight punches, like when he knocked out Eddie Wineland, for example, with that straight two, that was fucking nasty, bro. Like he he just has so much uh, dexterity on the feet. I just, bro, Aljamain Sterling, this run that did, dude, like who would have thought dumb by he's beating by TJ Dillashaw and, you know, whatever, the, the asterisks, whatever. Henry Cejudo, Piotr Jan beat him. He actually he beat, beat him. him the same he time. He did beat him. Dude, Not he is on a, an historic run. He's cementing his place as one of the best band of all Sterling. Time. And I don't, see, I don't see Sean O'Malley standing in his way, bro. Once, like, when's the last time, and this is, you know, an actual question. When's the last time that Sean O'Malley was tested to the to this extent not even to this extent but close to this extent against a grappler ground. like, like Aljamain sterling i mean we could go back and look at his Jan fights took him down but he pedro got right munoz back up, right? peter Jan, peter Jan held him down for some time he held him down but he was able to work back up but i don't think he's gonna be able to do that against Aljamain sterling he's not which is why i think he finds the ko blow maybe before you said or so maybe after this is early because also if this go if this gets into the later rounds and we haven't seen sean well, no, we saw him in the last fight. Well, that was a three rounder though against Jan, right? Yeah, I, I don't so that's think tough. I don't think it happens late. I don't. Yeah. I can't predict a round. I think it's either one, two, or three KO for O'Malley. But don't get me wrong; I wouldn't be shocked whatsoever if Aljo gets the submission. As I said, everything about this matchup is telling me Aljamain Sterling is yeah. going to win. It's I just mean, that bad feeling that it's this superstar superstars moment. Jesus can't talk, and that shook Sean O'Malley will sleep him. Yeah, I mean, my pick is going to be Aljo by sub, and I, I think. Fair it'll, enough. Co- it'll come in the later rounds, I think maybe three or four. And and the reason is in the early rounds, Aljo's cardio, by the way, is one of he has a really, really good gas tank. Like against Piotr Jan, his best defense really is his offensive output. He just throws so much and it doesn't even make sense really all the time. Yeah. It's just throwing yeah. just to throw and just, you know, give you something else to think about. But he'll do that in order to set up the takedowns and set up, you know, the 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 cage um exchanges and stuff like that. So, you know. Aljo's gonna put the pressure on from the from the jump. Like Sean is gonna be on the back foot the entire time. That's just how it's gonna be. And he's a great counter striker, so I could see him, you know, landing that lucky shot. But bro, if this fight goes to the ground, in every round that the fight goes to the ground, it will stay there. That's the simplest way to put it. You know, when he gets into the ground, he's not going anywhere. So I think Aljo, with that much time to work and you know how good he, he is at jujitsu, I just don't see him losing this fight. So yeah, I'm gonna go Aljo, and I, my pick will be a sub in round four. I think that's the fair enough. Sub. And you know, I don't want to see anybody lose this fight. I'm a fan of both guys, honestly, yeah, man. I mean, I Sugar too. Sean O'Malley, one of the biggest stars in the UFC right now. And Aljamain Sterling was hated after that knee. <sighs> but on this unpredictable run, I mean, who would have expected he would have out-wrestled Henry Cejudo? I mean, That's what, what I'm a win. saying, man. Like, he's he's really on a run. He's Good for really him. Run. Good for him. And I feel like if he wins this fight, he definitely establishes his best bantamweight of all That's time. That's crazy. <laughs> Aljamain, Aljamain Sterling. Aljamain Sterling, best that bantamweight of all time. One of the best back takers of all time as well. Yeah. But yeah, that's all we really got for the main event. Should be fun. Co-main event. Zhang Wei Li taking on Amanda Lamos. Zhang Wei Li looked damn good in her last fight against Carla Esparza. But we got to remember, that's Carla Esparza. Amanda Lamos, younger contender on the rise with some heavy hands. Yeah. But I just feel like Zhang Wei Li is going to mix it up. And it's just probably going to win a decision. Give me Zhang Wei Li to win this fight. What do you think? Yeah, I got Zhang Wei Li. And we were there. You know, we got to see her in person uh, against who Esparza. Was Esparza, yeah. 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 And uh, she was she was, she was, just absolutely looked incredible. And I and I get everything about Amanda Lemos. In her last fight against uh, Rodriguez, she looked wow. Like her striking. And Marina is known for her striking. She, she stunned her. Yeah, she stunned her bad. And it was like, you know, again, she just hits like a truck when she lands. 
Um, but Zhang Weili is so good and so versatile when she she's got an equally as good ground game as she does on the feet. Like she's very good in the wrestling department. She'll you know pick her opponents up, slam them out. Like she's very very good um, in the wrestling department. And I think she'll use that to her advantage more than she has in the past. Like I think against Carla, you don't want to wrestle with Carla. Yeah. You need that to be a yeah. striking match. And she did even go to the ground and, and beat her on the, in the in that department yeah. as well. So I think um, you know against Lemo, she'll have the all around advantage, and uh, she's just so good, bro. I. I don't see Lemo unless again similar to Sean. If she lands that one lucky punch, then I think you know obviously anything can happen. But the safer bet would be Zhang. So I'll go Zhang by uh, decision. Fair enough. You Fair enough, man. Yeah, I, I mean, don't get me wrong, Amanda Lemo. This could be her moment as well, it could. just because how good she looked against Marina Rodriguez. I mean, mm. that one punch just rocked her, rocked her. We've never seen Marina Rodriguez get done like that. Usually, yeah. it was her doing that to her opponents. Remember uh, Rodriguez versus Reboss? Yeah, so, like, yeah, knocked exactly. her out twice. Mm -hmm. But man, Amanda Lemos, nobody really expected that. Rodriguez was dominating, and then Lemos showed off this power that you just don't see at strawweight. A different kind of power. Last time we saw that was like Jessica Andrade. Yeah, and her yeah, prime yeah. was knocking people out. And speaking of Jessica Andrade, she's looked completely shit ever since she started in <laughs> hey, OnlyFans. Yeah, cut her some slack, bro. She fought Tatiana though. Cut her some slack. She's selling her nudes online and making money. Good for her. <laughs> oh man. Um, but still, hey, at least she's making bread. But um. Yeah, no, uh, not the same Jessica Andrade. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I, I gotta go. I, I, I don't think it's Lemos's moment. I think Zhang Weili is just too good. Yeah, I think she uh, mixes it up and uh, wins a decision. I think that's fair. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about when it comes to this fight? I feel like that's really no, it. No, yeah, that's really it. I think Zhang gets it done. That's that's it. And then uh, the return of Ian Gary, man, oh, taking that, on yeah. Ian Gary, taking on Neil Magny was supposed to be Jeff Neal. Whew, I just think this is this is a much easier fight for Ian Gary. Jeff Neal's a stud, man. People were underrating him. Or, excuse me. People were – oh, yeah. People were – can't speak. Sorry about that. <laughs> people were underrating Jeff Neal going into this fight. This That guy's an absolute monster, but, of course, pulls out due, due to an injury. And Ian Gary gets his original wish in Neil Magny. How does Neil Magny win this fight? Tell me. I don't, I don't how, know. How? I don't know. Audience, tell me. Viewers, tell me. What's Neil yeah, Magny's path to victory? This winner. should be Ian Gary styling yeah. on Neil Magny all day, every day. I like Ian Gary by domination. Yeah, no, I mean, we saw it in his last fight. I think that was really his coming out party, just to tell everybody, yo, I'm the real deal. And, I mean, Dan Daniel Rodriguez is no, you know, easy fight, and he made him look like an easy fight, really. And I think Neil Magny is not the guy that, coming in on short notice, you think has a chance to do anything. Because he's not, this fight is going to be on the feet the entire time. And Neil Magny, he his style of striking is very. I, I just it's it's not it's not uh, aggressive enough. I would say I think he's he's a, a very uh, cautious fighter, and that could be used to, uh, against you know against him sometimes. It could use uh, he kind of hurts himself by fighting like that sometimes. Um, and I just think that Gary is is in a prime position. Like he's he's just. He's, they're giving him, you know, slow fights that can just build, that he can build his way up and, and to start him slowly. And I think this is just another one on that track. Like he's going to have an easy time with Neil Magny. He's, he's going to destroy him. He's going to destroy him. I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, the, as I said, and I can't stress it enough, there's, there's literally no path for Neil Magny to win. Maybe holding up, holding him up against the cage, but it's going to be harder to do for three rounds when you're stepping in on short notice. Against an up-and-coming guy like Ian Gary, who's so good on the feet. who's looks so polished. who's coming off a big knockout win in the first round. That was the first round against Daniel Rodriguez, yeah, yeah. right? This guy, Ian Gary, has really, really impressed me. I think uh, he wins this fight. And you know another fight I want to talk about? Marlon Chito Vera was supposed to take on Henry Cejudo. Now he's taking on Pedro Munoz. Man, another grandpa for, for Marlon to beat up on. This should be, <laughs> this, this should be Marlon Vera. All Why day. are the odds so close? Minus one eighty five plus one fifty four. Oh, well, I guess I mean that that Sanhagen fight, man. In the early okay, rounds, yeah, Corey Sanhagen, bro, you don't understand. First of all, Corey Sanhagen is so underrated, and we and people were giving him all sorts of hate for this slow and and very you know blase blah performance that he had against. Um, who did he just blase blah? <laughs> it was nothing going on really. It was very lackluster, I would say, but. He's still so he, good. he did what he had to do, and he almost subbed him. Like, I thought yeah. Rob was going to tap yep. in that last round. 
um, Corey is, is so good, but that, this is not about Corey, but, um, just to say, you know, don't take too much away from Marlon off of the, a loss like that, because I just do think that Corey Sanhagen is a level above Marlon, Marlon Vera, but Pedro Munoz is not on that level. He's not close to that level, especially at this age. Like he's going the other way, you know, as Marlon's going up, he's going down and, and, uh, you know, Munoz, obviously he's always a danger and he, he hits very hard. He has nice calf kicks that he's incorporated into his style over the past few years. Um, but dude, Marlon Vera, like when he's fighting guys like this, where he has the range advantage, yeah. he has the speed advantage, yeah. he has every advantage on the feet. He's going to make this look easy. And Pedro Munoz is going to get destroyed. I, I agree. I, I don't know about destroyed though. I think Munoz puts up a fight at the beginning and keep in mind, this guy Munoz has a granite it chin. It is a three round fight. He's got a granite chin. Vera's known for being a slow starter, but I feel like he knows, man, this is, this is do or yeah, die he's for him. He's got to make a statement up. here. Mm-hmm. I, I think Vera does win a dominant decision. Munoz may have some success in round one, but um, this should be Vera all day, every day. I just another fight in which how does Pedro Munoz win this yeah, fight? Yeah, I just I, I, my bet uh, on this fight would be uh, Marlon Vera to win by decision. I to your point, Pedro Munoz very tough. He's got a great chin. Um, he doesn't get finished very often, and um, but Marlon Vera has everything he needs to win this fight. So yeah, by decision. I agree, Vera by decision. I, I think that's that's pretty much a lock for this fight. Um, what else do we got on the card? Are you looking right now? Yeah, I'm looking at it. We still got, bro, Cody Garbrandt versus oh my Mario, God. Ba- Mario Bautista. I didn't even mention that. One. The return of Cody No Love Garbrandt. Yeah, I mean. His last fight, he fought Trevin Jones, was it? Yeah. And he won 29-28. You know, it was a snooze fight. Ooh. <laughs> I, I don't even. Yeah, Co- I mean, Cody I turned Garbrandt it off after like two rounds. Statement wins right now, and that was not a statement. And he's right. going up against Mario Batista, who's known for being a submission threat. And you know, you look at this fight, you look at the odds. I believe Batista's Batista is like minus three twenty five right now. But man, think about it. I don't think Cody. Do do me a favor and look yeah. this up. Has Cody Garbrandt ever been submitted? Hmm. I don't so. think so. Don't get me wrong. I, if that's true, I, I think the odds minus three twenty five for Batista. I think he wins the fight, but I just think that's a little crazy. Just go to Tapology. It should tell you yeah, that. Yeah, I should. Have, yeah, you see. Well. I believe he's never been submitted. I think he's only so, been knocked out. Yeah, TKO, TKO. Yeah, he's never been submitted. Never. Not been in the UFC, submitted. at least. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he was undefeated going into the yeah, UFC. So, yeah, so yeah, he's never been submitted. Man. I, I do think Cody Garbrandt stands a chance. And I think this should be more of a Bautista, like maybe minus 180, minus 200, closer to those Vera Munoz yeah, odds. Yeah, these odds are pretty, yeah. Don't get me wrong. You know, if, if Garbrandt's having some trouble with Trevor Jones, he's probably going to lose to Mario Bautista. Mm-hmm. But man, this, the, the styles, the, the, the clash of styles, man. I think Cody Garbrandt has a chance, and I wouldn't be surprised if he won like a decision. I don't see him knocking him out. I don't think Garbrandt has any KO power left. Um, the pick's gonna be Batista, but don't wouldn't be surprised whatsoever if Garbrandt sneaks a decision. Yeah, um, I agree. I think uh, Cody needs needs a, a really big statement victory, but this is not uh, a great matchup for that to to happen for him. I just think uh, he's he's past his, his prime, man. Like it's it's over for Cody. <laughs> yes, you think like so? The, yeah. the simplest way to put it. Uh, of course, he has a chance. You saw he... that footwork in that fight, though. He was like, "Dance yeah, getting sturdy yeah, in the yeah, octagon." Yeah, but it's you know, it's just all it's all for show. I think it, it's you know trying to make the optics look better, but. Because, dude, he got outlanded bad by Trevor Jones. I haven't realized, bro. He got, like, double. I think Trevor Jones landed double the strikes. Uh, Round three, he really turned it up, yeah. I believe. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I just don't see him getting this one. But, um, hey, he had a good career. Final, pred- <laughs> final, <laughs> I'll go, Final I'll go, prediction? Uh, Bautista by uh, unanimous two. I agree. Give me Bautista by, I don't know. I think he hurts Garbrandt. I just don't think he'll be able to knock him out. You know, maybe... Give me Cody Garbrandt does take his first career loss by submission just because hmm. he gets hurt and then gets submitted and like kind of doesn't know where he is hmm. and gets Renee naked choke. I like that. Um, so yeah, I agree. Give me Bautista to win, but I'm going to go submission. Wouldn't be surprised if it was decision as well. Are there any other fights on yes, this card? bro. Chris Weidman. The return of Chris Weidman. It never Weidman. is. This card is absolutely Dude, stacked. Imagine that, if I mean, Henry Cejudo stayed on this card. Imagine yeah, if man. Yadong oh, Font man. stayed on this card. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Oh, it would be one of the best cards we've ever seen. Yeah, no, but Chris Weidman back in uh, this is interesting. a big way. He's fighting Brad Tavares. Tavares. Um, yeah. <laughs> Tavares. <laughs> Brad Tavares. <laughs> but, yeah, Brad Tavares is a minus 265 favorite in this fight. Um, but we haven't seen Weidman in, what, two years? It's right. been a while it's since been that, two over two, two and a half years. Two and a half years since that leg Man. break, Ugh. and and that was a bad. Does not feel like two and a half years. Yeah, ago, it doesn't. So, right? It really doesn't. I, I remember exactly what I was doing. I remember same. my exact reaction same. when that Head happened. Down and on wasn't my desk. that same card when Jimmy Crute hurt his fucking leg too? 
Like he kicked somebody. And, yeah. And then went yeah. limp. That was it? crazy. Was I think it? that was the same. No, I'm interested. Or maybe it, it wasn't, but I, that, I don't that know. was that against Anthony Smith. Yes, Anthony Smith. Was, he kicked right? his freaking leg. And was it that? Went I believe you're right. I think that Bro, was that card was wild. That yeah, two sixty one. That that card was insane. Man, Jimmy Crew, what a, what a fall off. I mean, we're not yeah. talking about him right now, but uh, was it? Was it? Was it? Was it? Yep, two sixty one. Yeah, Look at you with the knowledge. Yeah, see? <laughs> <laughs> nah, but um. I, I, I would love, love, love to see Chris Weidman get a victory here. I don't know. You know, obviously, we haven't seen him fought so long that, you know, we maybe he's made improvements to his game. He's obviously a great wrestler. Um, but Brad Tavares, I mean, is not a guy that usually looks to take fights to the ground. He looks to keep uh, the fight oh, standing. No, he's not good to take um, now. Yeah, so I think this he stays on the feet. Unless Chris drags it to the ground, which I could see happening if he well, doesn't Well, yeah, that's, wanna, that's probably his game plan. Yeah, yeah. Like, grab onto him and yeah, take him And especially, you know, coming off of injury like that, being back, you can't. You can't um, replicate a fight, an actual live fight environment in practice. You just can't. Yeah, so, for I, sure. you know, for him to step back into a real fight after suffering such a devastating injury like that, it's probably going to bring back a little nerves and a little, you know, PTSD. Um, exactly. Dude. So, so we'll see how that affects him. Um, it, will he be a little hesitant to throw that kick? Will he be a, a little hesitant to check with that leg and take some damage? You know, we shall see. But um, I think uh, I'm going to pick Chris. Fuck it. I'm picking Chris. Because uh, oh, like, shit. Brad Tavares. <laughs> right. Exactly. It's not yeah, even Brad, Brad Tavares. Like, Brad Tavares is good. But he's, he's not, not like the old Tavares. The old Tavares old. was a little better. But he's coming off a brutal knockout against Bruno Silva as well. Yeah. This Bruno guy's Silva. not the same Tavares he used to be, man. Mm-hmm. He, this guy peaked like in his mid-20s. He, I believe he's what, 31 now or 30? Mm-hmm. And he, he's not the same fighter, man. I, I think Weidman definitely stands a chance, but just because I think that PTSD is going to be running through Weidman's yeah. head, man. Nah, it I think Tavares tough. finds a late finish. But that crowd is going to be all behind him. You know, You're like right. that, that environment's going to be great. You're man, right, so. but still, man. Like, yeah, it'll be. But hey, <sighs> you remember, weren't people, when he fought, now nah, this is so long ago, but when he fought Gastelum, <laughs> nobody was giving him a chance and he won. Who, Weidman? Yeah, that was like, but, but <laughs> he's really, like, that was when he was viewed to be past his prime and now he's like really past his prime. So I would not like put any money on this fight whatsoever, but. Okay. Um, but I'm just going to go with Weidman for the fun of it. So I'll say Weidman by, uh, by decision, by unanimous. No, by, by split decision. That's why I can see the judges screwing this one up. That could be a possibility. Like Brad wins one round and then probably, you know, wins the the third. And then the judges are like, all right, you know, Chris Weidman. Um, I'm going to go Tavares by round two or round three knockout. Mm. Damn, yeah, TKO, I would hate to probably. see that, bro. I, would. I think it'll happen, dude. Yeah. I just think Weidman's past his prime. <laughs> yeah. Is there any other? I don't think. There's I mean, really yeah, any not much, really. Right? I mean, we got on the prelims. Andre Petrovsky, uh, Ultimate Fighter winner versus Gerald Mearshart. He didn't win the Ultimate Fighter. He didn't. No, he uh, lost. Uh, to, uh, he's good. He's probably the best fighter out of the Ultimate Fighter. Did he lose fighter. to Gore? He lost to. Oh no, no, Brian Ooh, Battle, right? Brian Battle. Yeah, yeah, Brian Submission. Battle. Submission. Okay, okay, but finalist, Ultimate Fighter, finalist. No, semifinalist. No way. He didn't make the finals. Damn, I thought you made the So it was, and you know, we'll do this after. You know, before we end the pod, I want you to that game we were playing before we went on. I want you to do oh, that with me. Yeah. And I'm going to do it with you with basketball. Yeah, but yeah, I can yeah. just remember off the top of the head because I was so locked in on that tough because it was the first one back. Yeah. Uh, Brian Battle submitted him in round two. Tell me if I'm right. Go to Tapology. Yeah, okay. Submitted him with a, I want to say an anaconda or some sort of like Bravo choke. In round two, uh, standing choke. And uh, then it was supposed to be Battle Gore in the finals, yep. but Gore tore his ACL. It was yep. Battle Urbina. Ninja then, choke, they call ninja it. Ninja choke, the yeah. Ninja yeah, yeah. choke. I've like never even seen that. Or That's like that. crazy. In round two, yes, you're right. Yeah, look at me. But it went, damn, bro. I swear I thought because Andre Petrovsky, he's a good wrestler. I know that about him. <laughs> you're right. Um, How, did he lose or win his last fight? I think he won, right? Against Wellington uh, Terman, see, UFC see. 281. We were at that fight. Tell me I'm right. You're, you're, you're wrong. What? That's you're wrong, wrong. He first of all he beat. Oh, uh, oh no, because this is topology. You're right. This they're showing grappling matches. I'm like, I'm like, because so they right? include. You're right. You're right. Yeah. His last UFC, his, his last UFC win was. Who gives uh, a fuck about a grappling? No, no, no. Match. That's why I didn't. I didn't see it. it's in the fine text. It says grappling. I'm like, who is it? I didn't even know because apparently he r- grappled Oban Saint Prue and, and beat him. Why is Oban grappling? He doesn't grapple. Um, yeah, he does, bro. He had the. Nah, but he's got UFC flu fights. jokes. No, yeah, but that's the only fucking. Yeah, yeah I guess. Guess. But, um, He's so out of his prime. Uh, it's Ampro. Yeah, but uh, Gerald Mearshart on the other uh, the, uh, the other hand. That should be sorry, a good fight. Be, um, yeah, it's a good fight. Give it's me Mearshart by sub. You know, I like Mearshart. If Petrosi's getting submitted by Brian Battle, he'll probably get submitted by uh, Mearshart. Yeah, and then your your fight Gregory Rodriguez and Tulunian. I like Rodriguez. That's that's shit on Tulunian. Yeah, yeah, that's really it. But uh, yeah, before we wrap it up, that's really all we got for two ninety two. Rohan, mm-hmm. the last team Langston Galloway played on in the NBA. Who was it? Oh, 
boy. Come on, I'm catching you. If, I don't oh, know if you guys know what hoopgrids.com is. It's like you have to get <laughs> what to explain what hoopgrids.com oh, is. Okay, for. so hoopgrids is like uh, this is not uh, sponsored by another the way. version of you know how Immaculate Grid has the baseball version, the football version. The explain what it version. is though. It's like it's like a, a it's a grid. It's a, a three by three grid, and in each column there's a specific team. Or, or in another uh, stat, it could be a statistic or another team. And you have to guess a player that either played for both of those teams or accomplished said stat and played for that team that's in that other row. So it's it's actually really fun. You guys should check it out. They don't have a UFC version yet because I don't know sponsored. how they would make that. They wouldn't be able to. And maybe they would be able to make that with, with like stats and stuff That'd like that. That would be cool. That would be cool. Um, but yeah, they have it in, for basketball and it's called Hoop Grids. That's, that's the one that I prefer because they have like different colors that uh correlate to you know, like a certain percentage because they have like yeah. a rarity yeah. score uh it's pretty cool last team that langston galloway played on bro the viewers have definitely tuned out by now because they do not give a fuck about langston galloway no no you can't look no, it up what I'm the just, fuck wait Hell i'm no. not i'm not Hell no up. i know the team no you're looking it up no no I, I'm not, I wasn't gonna look it up all right ready ready i'm just gonna rattle off some teams that he has played for i know he played for the pelicans the knicks the suns the you're Pistons. never gonna get it you're not gonna get it i'm telling you you're not gonna get it I want to say, is it the Indiana Pacers? Uh, is it the Orlando Magic? Uh, Damn, I don't know them. Who is it? You Tell give me. up? I'll get one more guess because I had, I had two. Guess. So let me, last guess, last guess. So it's not the Magic and it's not the Pacers, which he did play for the Pacers. I know he did. Ten. Fucking been nine, around the way, bro. Eight, Passed around like a thotty. Who? Seven. <laughs> Damn, I don't know. Six. Five. You give up. Four. Last three, guess. Atlanta Hawks. Two. I never even played Damn, the yellow. What the I fuck is wrong? I was just getting, I don't know. Who the fuck okay, so he played for two teams in the 2021-2022 season. Okay. He played for the Milwaukee Bucks, played three games for them, but the last team he played for yeah. was the Brooklyn Nets. That's crazy. How many games did he play? Four. <laughs> But he averaged, he averaged Sorry, 14 guys, minutes. Sorry, guys. I didn't catch okay, those Okay, now, give me, now you give me one with a UFC fighter. Okay. What was the UFC fighter's last nah, fight? He'll end it off on a high note because he I knows will. this thing. Watch me. Give me, me, me a go, I'm, Just give me a hard fighter. Come on. All right. I'm going to go deep in the in the trenches. You're not getting this. I'm going to get it. Watch me. All right. Ready? Hold on. Watch me. Let's go. I need to get the the uh, who they fought and how they won. But not the round. Just how they won. All right. Just a random fighter. Any random fighter. Typology. It can be just like a, like, bum. Anybody. All right, wait. Who did? Damn. See, now, why? I'm so bad under pressure. I can't even fucking find oh a fighter God. now. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> All right, ready. Dun, 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 dun. Who did? Gleason T-Bow fight. Bro. Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> hold, on, hold, on, hold on, It was a PFL fight, if I get this. Hold on. It was a PFL fight. Oh my god! What 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 weight was it at? Was it one one seventy? It was at one seventy. Give okay. Can you give me the the first letter of the person's first name? Wait. All right. Ready. His name began with a B. Oh my god! Psych. His name started with an M. Bro, I hate typology. His name started with an M. Well, yeah, and it's, a, and it's a very, it's a very, you should know this actually. It was, a, it was in the PFL. It was a decision. He lost by unanimous decision. And no, actually his, you may not know this, but it started with an M. It's one of a, he's from a, a, a region of the world that is very densely populated with UFC fighters. Is he another Brazilian? Said. No, but it's the other one that's very densely populated. With Russia. UFC fighters. Yeah. So his Magomed, name, Magomed yes. Karamov. Yo, Magomed. <laughs> Let's That's it, go. signing off. <laughs> Episode 14. Hope you guys Yo. enjoyed. UFC 292 should be a bunch of fun. He sucks at guessing NBA players. I'm amazing at guessing UFC fighters. Oh, I'm kidding. Man. You guys nah, should I'll see get this. The crown back you should time. see his hoop, hoop grids. Yeah, I mean, I'll show you. <laughs> it's insane. We oh, got to post man. that on like the story or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Yes, Side note for now. Lucas Rohan. Adios. Peace.